Day 19 in the January transfer window and Rangers still haven't signed anyone. Yes, that's right, guys. It is the 19th of December. Welcome to Glasgow Rangers Nation. I'm your host, Owen David. This is the channel that brings you all the latest content uh, or for the grand price of nothing. So, yes, it is day 19. It is the 19th of December. And as yet, there are still no permanent signings through the door at Ibrox. Yes, we have a Fabio Silva on loan. But as yet, no striker, no left back. No centre midfielder, no winger, no centre back, nothing. Now, look, patience, yes, I know what you mean. Patience is a virtue, they once said, but you know what? I want it now. Now! <laughs> um, so, look, we've got some news this morning, this uh, today, about what is being reported by Sky Sports, it's a reasonably reliable source about Lawrence Shankland, uh, as well as news that a Rangers target, well, alleged target that was then denied, has joined a club in Serie A. Um, we've also got a little bit of news about those players that were a player who was linked, a Croatian midfielder who was linked with Rangers and how his future has now been settled. But let's obviously start off by talking about the man that we're all, we've are we all been talking about a lot recently, and that is Lawrence Shankland. Yes, Lawrence Shankland, the Rangers fan who plays for Hearts. Uh, 18 goals this season, phenomenal season. Some great goals, some great finishes. Shankland, I think, is widely regarded by a vast majority of the Rangers support as been a man who could fire us to the title. And certainly on the podcast last night with Laura and Damien, we did mention and talk about Lawrence Shankland quite a lot um, in terms of both of them Both of them agreeing that Shankland could be someone who could fire Rangers to a title. Now, I get that Shankland would cost money. I understand that he would cost four, five, maybe even six million pounds to prize him away from the Edinburgh outfit. But look, I'm more than confident that if he came, that he would score the goals to fire us to the title, get us in the Champions League, therefore more than paying for himself. Also, perhaps fire us for another round in the Europa League, as obviously we get look up for our last 16 draw in February as we move towards the ties in March. So, what of Lawrence Shankland? Well, the chairman at Hearts has been talking about Shankland, saying that he that Shankland has been offered an absolutely huge bumper deal by the club to make him one of the highest paid players there, or the highest paid player there. He also said that there had been no interest, well, no official interest was his words, in Lawrence Shankland, that no club had yet approached Hearts for the services of their captain. Which, you know, there's no reason to doubt what he's got to say. There's no reason to think that he's, that he's lying. There's no reason to think that that's the case. Unless, obviously, he's playing some game and trying to force up the price. Trying to perhaps get Shankton to sign his contract by saying, look, there's been no interest in you. So you might as well sign and stay here. Could be a bit of that, maybe, in what he is saying. However, Sky Sports have been reporting that there is an interest there from Rangers. This is what Sky was saying earlier. So... Rangers still want to bring the, in a forward player, and there is an interest in Lauren Shankland at Hearts. This is what Sky are reporting. I'm told the figures involved, if that was to happen, would not be insurmountable. It could be done straightforwardly, but they will perhaps have to move some bodies off the wage bill first and will need a common consensus that he is the right player to go for. Now, there's a couple of things to read into this comment that was made by Sky. First of all, that we need to sell to buy, that there is a need to clear the wage bill. Now, I think that, yes, there is a slight bloating to the squad. Yes, there is one or two too many players on the on, on the current squad. Um, the average age is high. We think there's 32 players. We have a higher wage bill than Celtic. So, yeah, I would see that there could be a, a need to move some players on to free up some wages, to free up some money to pay Shankland. Understand that. Now, this second bit is the bit that worries me. We need a common consensus that he is the right player to go for. So it sounds like there is a kind of a, a logjam in terms of the football board. The football board are making a decision on whether or not Shankland is the player that they want. Now, there has been reports already that the Rangers football board are split over Lawrence Shankland. Now, this is my take on it. And this is just my take on it. My take is that if Philippe Clement wants him, Sod what Clement, what anyone else thinks. If that's the player that Clement thinks can win us a title, that Clement thinks can make a difference, then what, you know, I don't know who is against it or who is for it. 
I am merely surmising here. You know, that if there are people like, for example, Craig Robertson and James Bisgrove against going for Lawrence Shankland, then those they need to wind their neck in, shut up, because they know nothing about football. At the end of the day, the peer person you should be listening to when it comes to signing players is the manager, the man who works with the players on a daily basis. You know, also, perhaps the director of football, Niels Coppen, again, someone who has a football knowledge. Now, nothing against Craig Robertson and, and James Bisgrove, but realistically, do they have the experience? Do they have the sound knowledge of Philippe Clement? I understand what could come back of that. We'll look at what happened with Michael Beale in the summer that we allowed him to have free reign, spend what he wanted. Perhaps the board have been stung by that. Yes, but the counter argument to that is... Billy Clement is a lot better manager and a lot better coach than, than Michael Beale. He is, in all intents and purposes, a proper manager, a proper football man, not whatever Michael Beale is. I'm still not 100% sure what Michael Beale is, certainly not a football manager. So, at the end of the day, for me, if Clement wants Shankland, sign him. You know what? If you're blocking it, if, you're, if it's Craig Robertson, if it's James Bisgrove, if it's a scout, whatever, shut your hole in, wind your neck in, listen to the manager, listen to the man who worked for the team day in, day out, listen to the man who actually knows what he's talking about. It could be that Clemon doesn't want him. If Clemon doesn't want him, then don't go for him because at the end of the day, we trust what the manager wants. There is no reason to not trust what Philly Clemon wants. Billy Clemon has singly proved that he is a top manager and top coach in the way that he has got a tune out of this vastly unperforming squad. I have a squad that we know doesn't have the talent realistically to properly compete this season. We know that he's getting a tune out of players that looked hopeless at the start of the season, that now look less, that look average or good. Okay, so not world class, but he's getting something out of them. So, like I said. If it is that Clement wants Lauren Shankland, then listen to Philippe Clement. Sod what anyone else thinks. Forget what James Bisgrove thinks. Forget what Craig Robertson thinks. Forget what Niels Coppen thinks. Forget what a scout thinks. It's what Philippe Clement wants that is important. Sky also reported this. He says, there's a lot of interest within Rangers, but there are also some doubting voices who think they should go for someone else. They also need to be mindful of the fact that Hearts will need to bring in a replacement so they can't drag their heels too much. And this is a key point. The longer they leave it, the less likely Hearts are, the less willing Hearts are going to be to sell in this January transfer window. I had people yesterday telling me on X, Twitter, whatever, that, you know, it could be the last seven to ten days. The longer you leave it, the less likely hearts are to sell or the more hearts are to inflate the price. Because at the end of the day, if Shanklin moves on, they're going to want to replace him. They're going to want to bring someone in who can be his replacement. So you need to give them time to do that. And like I said, the price will rise the deeper we go into the window. OK, so at the end of the day, that this deal needs to get done. If there are doubting voices saying that this is someone else they should get, if that voice is not Philippe Clement, is not Niels Coppen, then we should not be listening to them. You should be listening to the football men, the men that know what they're talking about, not the businessmen, not the business side of it, the guys who don't know football. It's the guys that understand the game that you need to listen to. Where a lot of these systems fall down, of football boards, of scouting groups, of whatever, is when you start listening to people who don't know football, who don't understand the game. You know, you can have all the years you wanted a football club, but if you are not a designated, if you're not a coach, the manager, for the a football director, whatever, who's got some knowledge of the game, has played the game, or has coached the game at the highest level, you genuinely do not know what it takes to be a to bring in a proper player who is going to influence and who is going to develop this team. Lauren Shankin is a proper player who will score goals, who will kick this team on. And if that's what Philippe Clement wants, I don't give a monkey's what anyone else wants. That's who you go for. You listen to your manager. I certainly hope that James Bisgrove, that Craig Robertson are on side with the manager and they are following what Philly Clement wants. Not what they want, what their manager wants. That's who they need to listen to at the end of the day. Uh, also, it was reported yesterday that uh, a man who had been linked with Rangers, although that had been denied, Josh Doig, has signed for Sassuolo in Serie A, not Olympique Marseille, as was previously reported, or Torino, who were also linked with him. Um, you know, not Sassuolo are not a uh, top team in Italy. 
They are not a team that you would kind of think of as been, um, you know, a big club or certainly someone who who you'd rate really highly. Uh, Sassuolo currently sit 14th in Serie A um, with a pretty dodgy record of having played 21-5, um, drawn four and lost 11. So they are not a great team. They are below Torino in the league and certainly not a good team. They're certainly a team that are still in relegation danger. So maybe Doig was not as good as many people painted him out to be if someone like Sassuolo are where he has ended up. So there we go. He is there at Sassuolo. Now, another player that was linked with a move to Rangers, certainly somebody who got a few fans very excited, certainly someone who I thought would have been a very, very good buy indeed, Marco Bolat, the Croatian, young Croatian player who plays for Dinamo Zagreb, who is, you know, yeah, very skillful, described as one of the very most talented up and coming Croatian players. You know, Croatia have had a good reputation for producing quality players, and we've certainly had some quality Croatian players at um, Ibrox, Nikiti Jelovic, to name but one. Um, you know, this would have been a good signing, however. It now appears that Bulat has committed his long-term future to Dinamo Zagreb by signing a much improved new contract. So it very much does look like he is well off the current agenda uh, that Bulat will not be signed by the club. However, it was felt that at the time his transfer fee could have been prohibitive for Rangers. Some five million was expect was rated as his actual value. So, you know, it's highly doubtful the Rangers would have five million to pay for Bolat. Also, a lot of people felt that the centre midfield position was not a priority position that they were looking for in this transfer window anywhere. Anyway, the left back, striker, winger are the key positions they do need to address in the January transfer window. Striker, obviously, been the foremost of those. So, Bolat signs a new deal at Dinamo Zagreb, who, according to a few rumours, are actually offering a loan deal to former Rangers winger Ryan Kent. That certainly could be an interesting one if that was to come off. Right, guys. So, look, we build up now. We've got a pretty intense period actually coming up for Rangers over the next few uh, days and weeks. If we look at the current uh, fixture list that is upcoming for the club. Now, obviously, on Saturday, we face Dumbarton in the Scottish Cup before a, tr a trip to Easter Road on Wednesday uh, of next week. I mean, let's have a quick look, shall we, at the upcoming fixtures that are there for Rangers. So Dumbarton in the Cup, half-five kickoff before a journey to Easter Road, which will not be easy by any stretch of the imagination on Wednesday the 24th. The last game in January is on Saturday the 27th at half 12 as we play St Mirren uh, away before a home game against Libby on the 3rd of Feb. There's then another game on the 6th of Feb, um, some three days later against Aberdeen at Ibrox. Uh, again, another chance to get some revenge on them for their, their previous win at Ibrox before uh, travelling to play Ross County on the 14th of February. Some four days later, it's, it's St Johnston, uh, which is one of the games in hand away before Hearts on the 24th. So, you know, looking at that, it is a pretty intense period of games uh, going up towards the end of Feb, with another game coming up on the 28th of Feb against Kilmarnock before a trip before Motherwell come to Ibrox on the 2nd of uh, March. So it's a real full-on period. You know, there's a lot of games coming up. So I suppose the fear has to be that if we do sign some players, when will Philippe Clermont get a chance to get them on the training ground and actually embed them into the team with all these different games coming up? So an awful lot coming up for Rangers. And certainly it will be a stern test over the next few days, weeks, and the, the month of January and February with the players that we have, the teams that we have to face. So those ties standing out amongst that, the Hibs, Aberdeen games. So, you know, will obviously not be givens. They will be here really putting it on. But Rangers need to be at the best. And this is this is showing that we really do need to invest in this window and get these players in sooner rather than later to give them a chance to bed in and be ready to play. Well, guys, let me know what you think of the stories we've covered in the video this morning or this afternoon or this evening, depending on when you're picking up. Obviously, the Shanklin news, the Bulat news, the Doig news, and obviously the little bit of a look ahead to the upcoming fixtures. Thank you so much for watching Glasgow Rangers Nation. Guys, remember as well, if you didn't check it out last night live, then give the, the podcast cast with myself Laura and Damien on a checkout it was a fantastic uh, time with those two guys brilliant conversations over the club please check it out 
Also, if you've not yet subscribed, please hit that sub as we approach our 5,000 target before the 6th of March. On the way out, as always, I ask two things of you. Number one, smash the like. And number two, as always, never forget, we are the people.